not only was he rookie of the year seven time all-star a basketball hall of famer extremely successful entrepreneur and former mayor of detroit of course i am talking about our guest dave bing dave thank you so much for doing the program with us tonight spending your time thank you i'm looking forward to it great well one thing we want to discuss with you is just how active nba players were this summer in the bubble dealing with the pandemic and social injustice and now the election what did you think about their role in all of this this summer i was elated to see the engagement by uh the active players um they 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 got a platform and they really took advantage of their platform and uh, the positions that they took were not only um nationwide they were global and so uh i'm very proud to see what they did they they were leaders bingo how important is it in particular for these black athletes to not only be terrific performers but also take the opportunity and that stage to be voices for the voiceless in a lot of ways? I think they really took it serious this year, um, and, and they took total advantage of the platform uh, that they command. And so there are a lot of people that look at sports um, as, as entertainment, uh, but I think the guys today understand just how powerful uh, their words are and the positions that they take. So uh, across the whole NBA, we had a bunch of guys who stood up and made themselves heard. And I think there were a lot of people out there that followed their lead. Mr. Bing, the, the basketball world is focused on next week NBA draft, the 74th NBA draft. Can you tell us a little bit what your draft night was like? Well, it wasn't exciting like it is today, that's for sure. <laughs> um, uh, you know, they, in my era, um, there was a coin flip for the, for the number one draft choice. And the worst two teams at that point uh, were the New York Knicks and the uh, Detroit Pistons. I assumed that I was going to be going to the Knicks because I'm an East Coast guy you know, played in Syracuse, played in the garden quite a few times at the collegiate level. And the number one player in the country was Cassie Russell right up the road from uh, Detroit and Ann Arbor. And so David Busher, who was the coach of the Pistons at that time, called the coin flip, thinking that he would get Cassie for sure. It didn't wind up that way. New York won the flip, they chose Cassie, and uh, I was the number two pick coming to Detroit. I didn't know anything about Detroit uh, outside of Motown and, you know, outside of the automotive industry. But uh, that pick for me changed my life. And uh, I'm still in Detroit. And I'll tell you, um, for me, I was lucky to be drafted by Detroit. Well, we were very lucky and grateful to have you. And you know how much I idolize you, not only by the way you performed on the floor as one of the top 50 players of all time, but also as an entrepreneur and as a businessman. And as somebody that actually hired me, Jacoby, at one point in time to work <laughs> at Being Steel. So can you talk about how important it is for athletes to not only pay attention to the score of the game, but also the game of life and being entrepreneurs and having careers outside of the game? You know, I think in my era, most of the guys uh, didn't think about uh, life after basketball. Um, a lot of them never prepared themselves from an academic standpoint or from a financial standpoint. They wanted to use their name uh, maybe after playing to sign autographs and that kind of thing, you know, go, go to golf tournaments. Um, but I always wanted to be uh, an entrepreneur. I wanted to own my own company. I wanted to grow my own company. And I was fortunate enough that that happened uh, for me in Detroit, but I was prepared for it. Um, I remember um, Jalen, uh, obviously uh, we go back so many years, it's hard, <laughs> it's hard to discuss what I feel for you also, <laughs> the things that you've accomplished. Extremely proud of you and I've known you and, and your dad was my backcourt mate. And, um, uh, you know, just what you're doing now and the impact that you are making outside of basketball is, is tremendous. And so I follow you 
And there are so many people, not only just in Detroit, but across the country who follow you and your success. So the platform that you have right now has made a big difference to a lot of players, both active and retired. Now, Mr. Bing, you've Thank seen you a lot much. of basketball. You've seen a lot of different eras of NBA basketball. And with the Lakers and LeBron James winning the championship, it sort of drudged up this GOAT conversation. Who's the greatest of all time? Is MJ or Kareem or Wilt or LeBron? Where do you stand on who the greatest basketball player is of all time? The most dominant player would be Will Chamberlain. Uh, the most successful would have been Bill Russell because of all the championships that he won. But when you look at MJ and you look at LeBron, if I had to choose who I would want to play with, I think it would be LeBron. Uh, and I say that because um, LeBron plays the, the, the whole floor, the whole game. Um, you know, he may not, he was not the kind of score that MJ was, but I think as a consummate player, both ends of the court, you know, the offensive end, the defensive end, he did some things statistically that, um, that MJ didn't do. And that he, you know, he led the league in assists this year. You know, he's a big guy, so he was a better rebounder. But nobody scored like MJ. I mean, he could, he could take it on anybody. And LeBron, I, I would prefer to play with LeBron. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.